everybody, and welcome to tonight's PM Magazine. Well, if it looks to the uninformed, naive, run-of-the-mill TV viewer as if I am wading my way through a veritable automobile graveyard here, if you think that, you're absolutely correct. It is an old folks home, more or less, that has been established by Bear Barrio. You see, Bear is the proud owner of one of the fastest Volkswagen dragsters in the world. And these machines, which have undoubtedly seen their better days, have been ripped apart so the dragster he drives can see it. And tonight we're going to visit with the Bear in his shop here in Beaumont, where he's put together that incredible dragster. But first, Anna has more about tonight's program, so let's check in with her. Thank you, Johnny. Good evening, everyone. Tonight I'm at Lamar University's track, where these athletes are really putting in a hard workout today. And you know, some of us may consider these people to be very fortunate because they're so talented. But tonight we're going to meet a man who says he's fortunate just to be alive. You see, he's lost his arms and his legs. But one thing he hasn't lost is his incredible spirit to live. But before we meet him in our department, Chef Tell will show you what to do with leftover vegetables vegetables. Judy Missett shows us some more jazzercises, and Orma Sampson will take us to Groves into the Consumer Food Warehouse. But right now, let's go back to John. this country has ever seen. But it hasn't been easy. Oh, so you're taking a motor that was originally made for 40 horsepower, and here we're putting over 200 horsepower out of it. And the transmissions were made, were basically made for 36 horsepower, and we still put, you know, 200 horsepower through them. And transmissions were our big drawback a few years ago. Well, three years ago. We went to a race in Florida, and I went through five transmissions in a weekend. The next weekend I had another race in New Orleans. I went through three more. That gets to be an expensive hobby after a while, huh? Nothing was available but stock parts. We'd have to go to Volkswagen and buy them. And then I said, well, that's the end of it. I've had it. I said, we're going to make something better. And that's exactly what he did. Through trial and error, Bear either made or bought parts that would withstand the strain on an engine not geared for the racing circuit. All of the work is done here in Bear's Volkswagen shop in Beaumont. Not only was the engine built there, but the most important concept of a drag race vehicle, the layout of the car. One of the most critical parts in a drag race car is the design from the driver back that makes the car cover the most ground the quickest in the first 60 feet. If the car is designed correctly, it'll cover ground the first 60 feet so fast that it'll cause a uh, something they call a retina effect. Many of us will never experience the retina effect, but then again, many of us may not want to. It's the G-forces, um, the car accelerates so fast that doctors or scientists you know, stay so that the blood moves away from the eye, your eyes, and you don't see anything but black and white. What's the, the experience you heard, or the, uh, the feeling behind that? I mean, because you're moving to such a rapid clip down there, it seems as if it would be just one big blur the whole way down. You feel, you feel thrust forces and G-forces and, and sensations, and a lot of times you start shaking. Because you know you're getting ready to go fast. It's just a rush of adrenaline going through your body. Reaching speed. 
speeds of 130 miles per hour and accelerating from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, you would imagine most racers' wives would be at home contemplating certain doom for their husbands. Not Bear's wife, Cindy, though. She's in the middle of all the action and loving every minute of it. It's lots of fun watching him and helping him go down the track and learning more and more about it and being able to tell him what he did right or wrong and help him along. Oh, I think it's great because he's, it's his big love. He's been doing it since he's a teenager. Before the car is all set up to go and rare to fire off the starting line, Bear, you've got to get it going here inside your garage first. This is really the nuts and bolts of the whole operation. That's right. Yeah. The the problems with getting this thing up and going for race day, I would think that they're almost innumerable. The biggest one. Yeah. The biggest one? The biggest one. Is making sure that when you go out to the racetrack, it doesn't fall apart. <laughs> it gets, gets that could be embarrassing, I bet. It has happened. You got to disassemble the motor and go through it and check everything in it to make sure it's in good shape uh -huh. because all the internal parts were made for uh, 40 horsepower. And when you start running in that 200 or so in there, that there's a danger of this whole thing collapsing right there at the starting line, yep. I would think. How much does it cost to get this thing up on the track? To move it into the... When it rolls out of here, ready to go racing, $12,000. Cylinder heads, $2,000. Transmissions, $1,000. Racing fuel, $3.15 a gallon. It's an expensive hobby, to say the least. It's been a break-even season for Bear, though, but a long one at that for his crew and wife and son. Today's race at East Texas Freeway in Uncle, Bear was one of the final four racers. But with the race only lasting nine seconds, and every one hundredth of a second crucial, a slight mistake could make the difference between a checkered flag and the pits. Failing to shift his machine into the second gear cost Bear this run and also victory for the day. But who would have thought a Volkswagen could compete with the likes of Chevys, Fords, and Plymouths? And while these small wonders may be obsolete someday, to Bear Barrio, the quickest bug in the country has left marks which racing history won't soon forget.